wow, this is scary. So. <laughs> okay, so. I know what it's like to perform on a daily basis and to not really be given a choice about whether I even want to perform. For many of us living with mental illness, daily life can be a rehearsed performance, skillful and rehearsed. You have to wake up and put on a face every day for a society that still doesn't truly accept you. See, with a mental illness, you get really good at performing, because you have to. You have to put on a face and be acceptable, hide your symptoms and make conversation, and that takes energy, so much energy. And you're spending all this energy just so the people around you don't have to feel uncomfortable, so that you don't have to worry about not being accepted. It feels hollow and isolating and burdensome. You feel cut off from the world while simultaneously being a part of it. And I mean, sure, no one's forcing you to perform, but not doing so can be risky. You could lose your job, be alienated from your friends and loved ones, face violence or discrimination. And frankly, that's not a risk many people are willing to take. In fact, many people hide all the way up until they can't anymore, once they've had a breakdown, been hospitalized, or even completed suicide. For me, this is a deeply personal struggle, because I spent the majority of my life trying to hide the fact that I have a mental illness. From an early age, I learned the benefits of performing in order to appear normal. I had more educational opportunities. I made more friends. I didn't have to worry about being discriminated against. I thought the benefits outweighed the cons. And that cons, well, those cons, were that terrible feeling in my stomach when I knew that I was only being accepted because I was being someone I wasn't. That heavy burden, knowing that I couldn't be honest with my loved ones. Eventually, the pressure got so intense that it started to seep into my life, making me feel isolated, depressed, anxious. I didn't know what to do next, but I wanted to try something different. So I went on my Facebook and made a public post. I live with a mental illness. I lit it all out on the post and just posted it and ran away from the computer because I was afraid of what people would say. But the response was overwhelmingly positive. The thing that impacted me the most, though, were the private messages. People reaching out to me and telling me that they felt similarly, but for a number of reasons, they couldn't be open about it. So I started thinking, how can I take this amazing, positive experience that I just had and bring it to those people who still have to perform. I started thinking about the good and bad aspects of performance, and it got me thinking about a couple questions. Instead of performing to appear normal, can we ask others to perform to appear crazy? <laughs> to understand the thoughts and experiences that we learn not to talk about? to use performance to tell a story about mental illness, rather than to hide from it. I'm tired of sympathy. I'm tired of pity. I'm tired of talking about the worst parts of me just to feel like people care. I'm tired of being an inspiration. I'm tired of being brave. I want to be ordinary and small and still see you there next to me. Tears because I will be a worthless parent. How can I do this? Tears for my ruined body and for my selfishness for crying about my body when I have a perfect child. Tears because this is hard and constant and lonely. I go on with this. How much of me is living right now and how much am I spending each and every day on cognitive maintenance? I feel like an old beat up car 
that has been sledgehammered at a seaside carnival and eventually towed to the closest junkyard, but somehow I still press on. So the performances you just heard are part of a series called Anonymous Open Mic, a project by my organization, Inside Our Minds. So here's how it works. Anonymous storytellers can submit a poem, spoken word piece, or short story about their experience with mental illness. Then, community volunteers can sign up to perform the pieces live on behalf of the anonymous storytellers without knowing their identity. The anonymous storytellers can impact the performance by providing context, performance guidelines, and trigger warnings, while the performers interpret the piece and give it the respect it deserves. Every anonymous open mic is free and open to the public, including the anonymous storytellers, who are invited to sit in the audience and watch their story come to life. The aim of anonymous open mic is twofold. One, provide a platform for people to share their story about mental illness, and two, educate our community about mental illness through storytelling. While we often focus the educational aspects on people without lived experience, it's important to build bridges among people with mental illness as well. Because of the huge diversity in diagnoses and lived experience, there can be a lot of infighting, polarization, and even stigma within the mental illness community. We can all benefit from learning about the experiences of others, even those of us who think we already know it all as far as life with a mental illness. And when you're performing these pieces, you can help build a bridge over that sense of isolation that comes with hiding. So for an example, at our first anonymous open mic, a performer gave a thought-provoking and emotional performance of a poem about bipolar disorder on the stage. The anonymous storyteller who was in the audience felt compelled to approach him afterwards and tell him how beautifully he performed that person's story. They had this natural connection, almost like a shared experience, except instead of a shared experience, it was a blending of lived experience and empathic performance. Woo, lost my place. <laughs> I got my notes secretly in here. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, this is an emotional topic for me, but yeah, I got it back now. So by witnessing connections like these, I've learned that while you can't fully replicate someone's life through such a small snapshot, you can increase your empathy for that person. As researcher, storyteller, and famous TEDxer Brene Brown said, empathy is feeling with people. And what better way to feel with people than to bring their story to life. I honestly can't think of a better one, and that's why I started Anonymous Open Mic. You can perform someone's story and give it life, and maybe even learn something in the process. So why are events like Anonymous Open Mic so important? Because speaking publicly, like I'm doing now, is a privilege that many people still do not have. There's no shame in not being able to share your story for any number of reasons, whether it be stigma, discrimination. And we want to have a platform for these people that really want to share the story and have that connection, but maybe for a number of reasons can't do so. Anonymous sharing can be the first step in the process or the ultimate goal for some. And while a world without performance is our ultimate goal, a future without stigma, discrimination, and ableism is still a long way off. But in the meantime, anonymous open mic and other events like it can provide a space for people to share their story however they're comfortable and able, whether anonymously or not. 
So final takeaways. Question constantly what you know and understand about mental illness. Instead of passing judgment, try and feel with people. Try and experience what they're going through. We're not crazy for having a mental illness. The only thing that's crazy is having to hide it. Thank you.